In the story of his life, entitled, My Experiments with Truth, Mahatma Gandhi explained how he took one universal ideal and brought it to everyday life. The results of his experiment affected the hearts of millions for generations to come. They illustrated with simplicity and purity a timeless message. Gandhi was unique, yet he always said that anybody could do the same thing. He tried on truth for size and found that it fit humanity for every occasion, provided that one wears it with humility and selflessness. As Gandhi tried to live by the ideal of truth, he also invited others to make the same discoveries for themselves or new ones by their own light of the same truth. In order to live the simple truths for himself, Gandhi developed communities where residents would seek to guide their lives according to spiritual idealism in fulfillment of practical aims. Gandhi's interest was life building or character building, and the ashrams provided the space for experimentation. In them, and under his careful observation, a microcosm of humanity could evolve logical and practical means consistent with and leading to a larger truth. Mahatma Gandhi wished to share his knowledge and his experience through the ashram setting. His experiments with daily life were explored through the ashram. The model for his teachings was commonly known throughout India as the guru-disciple tradition, the tradition whereby the teacher imparts his or her knowledge directly to the student through a lifelong commitment. Though the student desires to learn from the teacher, every wise teacher knows that he or she is eternally a student, constantly learning the wisdom of truth at each stage of life. Those who live according to the ideal of ashram, wherever they may reside, are those who join in the identification with a progressive ideal of human existence. This is our ashram. In our ashram, there are no walls. The only walls we have are those of the ashram disciplines. But they are not intended to cramp us, but to protect and give us greater freedom. It is only when we observe spiritual disciplines voluntarily that we experience real freedom. The members of communities founded by Gandhiji were expected to embrace the ideal of ashram as embodied in certain vows or observances. Gandhi explained that a vow is a spiritual commitment of self-dedication of body, mind, heart, and soul, consistent with truth, which benefits all of life. To vow means to steadfastly do what one really ought to do according to the purity of his heart and the nature of truth. To experiment with communal life, making it a point to gather people from diverse regions, religions, and social classes to live together for a common purpose. All lived as family at Gandhi's first ashram in India with chores and shared responsibilities. Rather than separate or isolate from the communities around them, they wanted no distinction. In fact, Gandhi preferred that what they would do in the ashram would draw the villagers unto them and uplift the surrounding life. People from all over the world wanted to be part of the living experiment in Gandhi's ashram, to be close to Indian village life 
and to learn from Mahatma Gandhi. Every day, Gandhi and the others living in the ashrams followed a routine of prayer or meditation, service, farming, cleaning, and cooking. This routine offered Gandhi and the other ashram members a foundation for a balanced spiritual, mental, and physical life. Each daily activity presented the opportunity for growth and reflection. Usually, he was up at 4 a.m. At 4.20 a.m., all at the ashram would gather for prayers and attendance was mandatory unless one was sick. Prayer does for the purification of the mind what the bucket and the broom do for the cleaning up of our physical surroundings. No matter whether the prayer we recite is the Hindu prayer or the Muslim or the Parsi, its function is essentially the same, namely purification of the heart. Following prayers, Gandhiji would rest and work at his correspondence. Then he would take breakfast and go for his walk. Gandhiji would visit the sick in the village. Then he would come back to the ashram for a massage and then begin work. By 11 a.m., Gandhiji would join the others for the midday meal relax a bit, read, and then work. From 2.30 to 4 p.m. was time for spinning. This was also a time when Gandhiji would receive visitors. From 5.30 to 6 would be the evening meal time. A walk followed by evening prayers would come after this evening meal and typically, Gandhi would read or give a talk on the Bhagavad Gita or the Ramayan. Yes. Gandhi valued silence amidst his busy schedule. Every Monday, he devoted the entire day to silent contemplation. Silence is a great help to a seeker after truth. In the attitude of silence, the soul finds the path in a clear light, and what is elusive and deceptive resolves itself into crystal clearness. Our life is a long and arduous quest after truth, and the soul requires inward restfulness to attain its full height. An ashram is a community built around a spiritual ideal making it a point to gather people from diverse regions, religions, and social classes to live together for a common purpose. In Gandhi's ashrams, the members of the communities were satyagrahis, seekers of truth, who tried to live truth. Gandhi said that for truth to be real, it must be lived. Gandhi was seeking universal truth, the truth of being, and the oneness of life. Therefore, in the ashram communities, no matter what your religion or social class, all would be equally responsible and all would be equally respected. <laughs> Gandhi felt that all forms of work and labor are of equal importance. Sabarmati Ashram was a center of activity. It was a simple group of buildings with simple rooms and little or no furniture. Surrounding the ashram were trees and farmland below it, close to the river, was a bit of sand where Gandhi and his friends met before sunrise and during sunset for prayers. At the time Gandhi was living in India, millions of Indians were poor villagers and he did not want to live with more possessions than they had. 
Gandhi wore a simple loincloth of white, hand-spun and hand-woven cotton. This was called khadi. Gandhi was looking for something simple that every man, woman and child could do. The act of spinning and weaving cloth was also meant to empower the powerless. Gandhi himself also wanted to set an example. In addition to his simple belongings and simple clothes, he carried with him a spinning wheel. He would be seen quietly spinning on the train, at a conference, or at home in the ashram. This example caught on, and men and women around the country were seen wearing white khadi, hand-spun and hand-woven cotton. Gandhi was striving to perfect himself and live up to a continually higher standard. Later in his life, Gandhi was described as a Mahatma. He was first called Mahatma by the poet-composer Rabindranath Tagore. Mahatma means great soul. But Gandhi tried to remain humble, even with such great titles bestowed upon him. He knew that he was not perfect, but he tried with all his might to perfect his thoughts, words, and actions. He tried to reach the high ideals that would bring him closer to realizing truth.